Yes, please. So when we think about live performance, we expect uh, the performers to be here, uh, to be present. And now that the performers can you know, play on the cloud, wherever they want, like what, what does that add to the performance? compared to, you know, just a recording, play a recording? Well, that's a great question. And so the way how I approach this is that historically, when you think about it, music was created by musicians for musicians. This was a community building exercise. We came together on music. And when the pandemic struck, I realized we will have to be over distance. And some of that was necessitated. And, and so this grew out of that effort. But then on top of that, what also happened is the idea that I want to connect with people I wouldn't be able to otherwise. So for instance, when I met Gala through another uh, uh, research opportunity, an exchange, we learned that actually we were both interested in this platform, and then Gala went out and looked for like-minded people in Buenos Aires, and she built a community there. Now, it would be wonderful if we could bring them all here, and we were lucky enough that we could steal Gala from them here, which is fantastic, but the idea is that it's not always possible. So this connection of people, this music game over distances, to me is, is more important than being in person because it transcends the boundaries that are currently pretty difficult to transcend otherwise. But this is not to say that we don't want to be in person and we still want to have physical presence. And we have a whole other array of research going into the physical embodiment of this because when the laptop orchestra started, we're actually exploring Tai Chi choreography as performance of converted motion into sound. But it was more gesture based and more sort of free flowing music, not so much beat pattern based. And so now we've looked at the same interfaces and applied them to the interfaces that we developed to this. And we're discovering that it's, it's possible, but there's a huge learning curve. And so there's a practical consideration of, I have students only for a semester, and by the time they get really good at doing more Twitter, they move on to something else. And some of them come back. I mean, Jacob, you've been what, in this, how many semesters? Uh, eight. Yeah. <laughs> so he clearly likes it. Uh, and so he's, he's a pro at this. And we've had a couple of those tenured students in Latin America, which is really great. But the idea is that we don't have them often, so that physical presence in this case, with this interface, would require at least two semesters to dive into and really embody that. And then it becomes physical presence because there's a kind of challenge to you know, type on keyboard and think there's music being made. And so that was necessary for pandemic, but now I want to go back on stage and embody that. So it's, it, you're seeing this in kind of a transitional stage, if you like. That was very long winded, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a really unique way of collaborating using electronic music over distance, which is something that prior to joining Lorc is something that I never really thought was possible, just because of the latency and the, the amount of lag that it would take to accurately be able to, to synchronize something like this. Um, but after essentially finding out that it was possible, um, it really brought me into the world of uh, computer music. I would say that for me, it's uh, great to have this experience because uh, with my folks in Argentina, we have been able to connect with people from here and experience this while I was still uh, back home. And it's quite amazing that we can actually perform on real time without latency or noise um, and create like electronic music. I also want us to be able to play live, like for dancing as well. Uh, but so far it's a great experience.